Hey everyone, welcome to another study. So for this study, we're going to be talking about a legitimate issue within, I think, all Christian denominations, and that's removal from fellowship because of non-conforming doctrine. Recently had a run-in with a pastor at an SDA church, and I want to share just a little bit of my testimony and what transpired. So with that said, I hope you've prayed for the Spirit of Christ to lead you, and you've got your Bibles open. Just a little bit more context, I've been attending this SDA church for approximately nine months. I recently got a test text message from this SDA pastor. Unfortunately, this was an unhinged text. Uh, he was kind of ranting and raving about how he has a 53-year career. This is the embodiment of the Church of Philadelphia, which is really interesting because at the end he essentially said, I think it's a good idea for you no longer to attend our church. Uh, the issue comes down to I'm teaching the New Covenant and they are teaching workspace salvation and they don't like to hear those doctrinal issues that they have in the Old Covenant. So let's go ahead and jump into scripture then. Isaiah 30, verse 8. Now go, write it before them on a tablet, the tablet meaning the Old Covenant. Note it on a scroll. This is a fulfillment of prophecy that it may be for a time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, do not see, and the prophets do not prophesy to us right things, speak to us smooth things prophesy deceits. Get out of the way, turn aside from the path, cause the Holy One of Israel, that is the word and true, true doctrine, to cease from before us. As an aside, I think it's really important for us to understand the typology of the blind man from John chapter 9. Of course, the blind man, he represents Laodicea because she's blind, poor, naked, and wretched. But this person received his sight from Jesus. What happened immediately after that? He was brought in before the Pharisees, which represent the Old Covenant. He proclaimed the truth of Christ in the New Covenant, and they immediately tossed him out of the synagogue. They removed him from membership, so to speak. John 9, 32. Since the world began, it has been unheard of if anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were born completely in sin, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. There is one prominent attribute of Christ, and that is that he does not force himself on anyone. He says, come. He invites you, but he doesn't demand you come, and he doesn't force you to come. So wherever we see that spirit of coercion at work and forcing in the church, that is always the spirit of the enemy. And that's exactly what I heard a Sabbath school teacher recently say. He said the following, we're only here to study and discuss official Seventh-day Adventist doctrine. If you disagree with anything I say, you can come up to me after class and we'll talk about it in private. So that is the coercive voice of the beast power and her daughters. It is only I. I'm not going to let any other voice speak. And if you want to talk, we can talk in private, but nothing will be challenged on a public stage. Zephaniah 2.15, this is the rejoicing city that dwelt securely, that said in her heart, I am it and there is none beside me. How has she become a desolation, a place for bees to lie down? Everyone who passes by her shall hiss and shake his fist. So for the rest of the study, let's concentrate on evaluating that statement from the Sabbath school teacher and we'll compare it versus scripture. So the first point in that regard is, no man on earth is my intercessor on doctrine. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. We can be taught by Christ directly. We do not need men to explain things for us or that we can get approval from them on specific points of doctrine. Matthew 23, 6, they love the best places at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplace, and to be called rabbi, rabbi. But do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself for a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. John 6, 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent him draws me, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall be all taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. 
So let's move on to point number two then. As we previously discussed, there is no coercion with Jesus. That is the beast power. Matthew 20, 24. And when they had heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Matthew eleven eighteen. Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Revelation three nineteen. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Again, Jesus doesn't barge through the door. We have to want him and invite him to come into our heart for him to do so. 1 Corinthians 14, 38. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. So for the next point, let's look at what a Seventh-day Adventist is. I can tell you what it is not. It is not a corporation with articles of incorporation, but rather it is a movement of people that recognize the blessing of the Sabbath and don't treat it as a curse with their little Old Covenant checklist. These are the people that are part of the Advent. They are looking forward to the Second Coming and their translation. And that's what they are preparing for. Um, so then true SDA doctrine is in accordance with the scriptures, not in accordance with the SDA corporation's creeds, including the fundamental beliefs, the church manual, or conversely what the Sabbath school teacher, the pastor, or the general conference president says it is. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly equipped for every good work. John 8.31, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and that truth will set you free. John 14, 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So for the final point, let's talk about the woman or the church that puts her doctrine above that of Scripture. And of course, this is the beast power or Babylon. So if the SDA church does the same, then they have partaken of the amalgam beast of Revelation chapter 13. Acts 5, 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you fill Jerusalem with the doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Again, it comes back to doctrine. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Isaiah 3.11, Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill for him. The reward of his hand shall be given to him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women, or the churches, rule over them. O oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your path. Jeremiah 31.21, Set up the signposts, make landmarks, set your heart towards the highway. Of course, the highway of holiness, the way in which you went. Turn back, O virgin of Israel. Turn back to these your cities. How long will you gad about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman or a church shall encompass a man, Jesus. So the final point is, no matter which church you are in or which denomination, if you cling to doctrinal truth, you will be persecuted. But there is hope for us in Revelation 2 and verse 8. And to the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, He was dead and came back to life. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And you will have tribulation for ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. I pray that you will continue to study these things. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.